bearings are used in orienteering. They're also used by map makers and map breeders of all kinds. Orienteering is when you get a compass and you go for a walk through the forest and you take your map with you and your set of instructions are things like go in this direction for this distance. Next step, go this direction for this distance. And each of those directions is described as a bearing. Now there are two ways to describe bearings. There's compass bearings and true bearings. And really it's just about different conventions for describing the directions. Your compass, you see, has a rotatable dial. Basically, you make the needle, the red needle always points north because it's a magnetic compass. And so you know which way north is, you work out the direction you're going and off you go. And on the dial of the compass is all the degrees around the circle. North is zero degrees. East is 90 South is 180, west is 270. And what we've got to do is describe our direction in terms of those compass points, in terms of the cardinal directions they're called, north, east, south and west. Um, so there are two ways we look at doing it. The first thing we'll look at here is compass bearings. And for a compass bearing, you have to ask yourself three questions. Okay, three questions. First, am I going north or south? Second, what's the angle away from north or south? And third, am I going away to the east or to the west? Let me give you some examples. Alright, let me give you an example. Okay, we always measure our bearings as if we're standing here. Okay? From the point where I'm currently standing, that would be north, east, south and west. So if this is the direction I want to go, off this way, then after I've walked off for a while, I'm going to be down here somewhere, and then I'm going to draw another north, east, south, west from there to work out the next bearing. So this is wherever I'm standing right now. And let's say this was 20 degrees. It's 20 degrees away from south, heading towards about to come. Okay, the compass bearing then is, well, is it north or south? Clearly it's south. Okay, what's the angle away from north or south? In this case, south. The angle away from south is 20 degrees. And then... Is it east or west? Well, this one's going eastwards. South, 20 degrees east. That's a compass bearing. Let me give you another one. Okay, so you go back to your list. Number one, is it north or south? This one is clearly northwards, because it's more north rather than south. Number two, what's the angle away from north? The angle away is 60 degrees. Third, is it east or west? Hmm, this one is west. North, 60 degrees west. Okay? Let's try another one. Give me a different colour actually. We get a little less confused. Ah, uh, let me see. This one. Number one, is it north or south? Clearly, north. What's the angle away from north? 25 degrees. And is it east or west? This one is east. And no prizes for guessing where I'm going to draw the next one. Okay. 
First, is it north or south? Clearly it's south. What's the angle away from south? Well, that's a little tricky, isn't it? I don't actually want this 20 degrees. That would be incorrect. I need the angle away from south. I need this angle here. Well, if this is 20 degrees, and this quadrant, the whole quadrant is 90, that means I've got 70 degrees left for that angle. So this is south, 70 degrees west. Pretty straightforward. That's compass bearings. Okay, for that tree bearings. A true bearing is an angle measured clockwise from true north. Now, if you know how an analogue clock works, you go, it goes that direction. It's just something you have to know. I know a lot of people today, a lot of my teenage students in particular, don't wear watches and even if they do, they probably wear a digital watch. Well, if you get a little bit stuck on that, as long as you know which hand we wear a watch on, most people wear a watch on their left arm. So if you hold up your watch arm, your left arm, and put your fingers up, you can see they fall over that way. They naturally curl that direction, and that's clockwise. So you start at true north, and you measure the angle around. Let's have another look at our angles that we've already marked, our bearings we've already marked. Let's start here, it's an easy one. What is the angle measured clockwise from true north. Well, there's true north. What's the angle clockwise? It's 25 degrees. 25 degrees. By convention, we write it with three digits, and many people put a T after it to say true. 25 degrees true. Too easy. What about this one? I need to measure the angle clockwise from true north. Clockwise from true north. If that's my true north, there's my clockwise angle, I actually have to have this angle here. The angle clockwise from true north. Well, getting to east would be 90 degrees, it's one quadrant. And how much is left here? Another 70. 90 plus 70 is 160 degrees. True. And this time there's already three digits. It's only up here you have a problem with that. Okay. That one is 160 degrees true. There's another way to work that out. If I was going south, that would be 180 degrees. And bring that true north is zero. Well, if that's 180, I want 20 degrees less. So that's 160. Okay, this one over here. Uh, this one is, let's see, true bearing. So I need the angle clockwise from true north. Get another color. Get a black one. I actually need this whole angle around there, all the way around clockwise from north. And I can't get this angle because that would be anti-clockwise. I must have clockwise. Okay, well, we said down south was 180, plus another 70 would make it 250. Let's double check. Going west would be 90, 180, 270, and I need 20 degrees less, which is indeed 250 degrees true. Okay, our fourth one. I need the angle clockwise from true north. Well, this angle is anti-clockwise from true north. I need the clockwise angle all the way around the circle back to there. Well, if that's 60 degrees and there's 360 degrees in the circle, then this one must be 300 degrees true. 